Hello, Keith Rucker here at VengeMachinery.org. Hey, what's up, Keith Rucker? This is Gary. Uh, I appreciate you kicking off my video here. Been a fan of yours for a long, long time, and uh, if you guys are just coming over from Keith's channel or new to my channel, um, appreciate you joining in. Uh, as I said, been a fan of Keith's for a long time and uh, wanted to make a uh, an American flag with the Vintage Machinery dot org logo and if you happen to be one of the people that watches my channel that don't know about Keith uh, check his channel out and um, he does a lot of cool stuff over there I've been following him since uh, really since he got on YouTube I think the first big build I was watching him do was that I think it was that Vance uh, was it matcher planer I believe it was um, at the uh, museum there that he, he does the work for but lots of machine restoration a lot of cool machining projects, uh, hand scraping, you name it, he kind of does it over there on uh, on his channel. So uh, a couple years ago, he built a new shop. He's been in the progress of getting it all set up. He's, he's really uh, come a long way with it. And uh, I thought a, uh, American Flag, you know, one of the ones I make with his logo incorporated into it would be cool uh, for his shop. So uh, here you see the uh, my True Cut CNC plasma table. Uh, cutting out his his flag and logo. Um, we cut this out of some 11 gauge aluminum 5052 that's 90 thousandths thick and um, so I did a little CAD work and the thing about it is is you know Keith and I've been going back and forth about this for for months. Uh, I'd gotten busy on a lot of other projects uh, and just just couldn't get the time to do it but uh, here's a little mock-up of how it came off of the plasma table And you can see how his logo is going to fit into the stars area. And the blue area of the stars will show up really nice behind those letters. So I'm using the Scrape and Burr tool that Reed Eichner sent me. Thanks, Reed. Appreciate that. I use it all the time. And um, this just kind of knocks off, you know, the where the pierce points are. You get a little splash up on the top side, and then on the back side, you get some dross uh, to deal with from the plasma. And then in some areas uh, where there's a lot of uh, concentration of cutting in a small area, you'll get quite a bit of heavy dross buildup uh, on fine details because you have, you have to slow down the plasma table to run it slower. So it pretty much takes a grinder to get, get that off of the back side there. So now we're gonna get the paint job going on this and, and um, I'm doing this one a little bit different than how I do my normal American flags. Usually the, the white stripes on the flags I leave as bare metal, but this time we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna leave it white. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the whole flag in this Omni Automotive two-part epoxy primer and uh, it's really good stuff. And you know, so just before we're gonna get that sprayed, I'm doing a final write down with a tack rag and then going through the letters you'll get these little fuzzy things uh, little bits of aluminum that kind of stick on the wall the the inside wall of the letter so just a quick little needle file there to, to knock those off and then getting our primer mixed up and just gonna use an air air part of the gun here real quick and go over it and blow off any last bit of dust or whatever um, and then come across and uh, you know lay down the white I didn't show it on video but uh, I ended up, you know, putting two coats on that of the white and then I didn't also show but I masked off all the stripes and did the blue on there and um, you can see the blue's got a little sheen to it but again it's just a candy base on there so far and let that sit for a day so that I can mask and tape on top of the blue without it actually pulling it up and then mask all the stripes. So when, you, when you're doing a job like this you know the the bare if I left the white stripes in bare metal it's a lot more forgiving because if you have some bleed over onto the bare metal well you can just take acetone and, and wipe it off so when I spray the red if it bleeds under the masking and gets on the on the metal stripe you know acetone wipe it right off of there if you try to use acetone on some fairly fresh epoxy primer to get the bleed over off you're just gonna make a mess and it's not gonna work so a lot of detail spent on the masking here and the more time you spend the, the better it's going to come out in the end um, and in the end i did have a couple of little bleed unders you know in a couple of areas but 
overall you'll see it's not really uh, not really that noticeable so once you get the masking all on there I, I spend another probably five or ten minutes and go back over all the masking again just pressing it down in all the tight corners to make sure that it's not lifted up um, yeah so here I'm using a grinder. This is the first time I've used a grinder going right over primer. Usually I do this right over the bare metal on the white stripes. And this just kind of leaves, you know, a cool detail under the candy red stripes and, you know, kind of adds a little bit to the tattered look, the tattered and torn look of the design. You'll see in a little bit what that looks like uh, after we get the candy red on there. So now I'm mixing up some wine colored uh, candy red. Uh, you could use candy apple red or this wine colored red, which I, I prefer. Just gives a deeper, richer look. Uh, and you'll see what that looks like. And so again, the little, uh, it looks like kind of a wheat straw thing. I don't really know what it is. The little curly cue thing on Keith's logo uh, pa painted it the same color. And so just was painting that real quick. And then here we start down painting the rest of the stripes and uh, using about a 75 percent overlap about an eight inch gun distance going fairly fast with a very heavy material flow and uh ended up putting a i think two or three coats on it and then here you see the unmasking of the stripes and uh it's uh, starting to come to life even the unmasking is kind of tedious because you know you want to unmask it while it's still wet so you don't have any bridging and and, and lift up on on the bridge but if you if you got wet masking you, you could easily flop right over onto the white and you'll end up with red stuff on your white which is what you don't want but i didn't show the clear coat off camera but this is what it looks like after about four coats of of high solids show car automotive clear and uh, you can see the white vintage machinery tag just turned out beautiful and i, I actually didn't get any video footage of the, the final assembly on it but um you know this was just after it came out of the gun but the kind of paint i use it it stays glossy like this you know for uh, for years it'll stay glossy like this for probably for the life of it if it's indoors it'll probably last 50 years or longer if it's outdoors it's the same thing as a car paint job 20 25 years you know if you keep it waxed and here it is in keith's shop and uh hanging up he got it so hopefully you guys will see it in some future videos thanks everybody appreciate it